Good morning, brethren and sisters. Church of the Living God, hello, good morning. Um, uh, sorry, brethren uh, and brother, I wasn't able to answer your call. Um, <clears throat> had a horrible night last night. But I believe it is because I, went, I strayed from my diet and acted as if nothing was wrong and I'm paying a consequence for that but um, my thorn in my, my flesh um, is definitely keeping me um, focused on the Lord uh, so sorry for you brethren who uh, tried to get a hold of me this morning um, I did eventually get uh, a little bit more sleep which was good which was good I needed it <laughs> so I need tea, the real stuff from out there. Anyway, um, in this video, I'd like to I'd like us to look into the scriptures about the upcoming famine that is going to be hitting our country here in America, and possibly in other nations uh, on the earth as well. Um, we have to remember, though, some things about our enemy as the Church of the Living God. Get your authorized version of the scriptures and turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to Isaiah chapter 14. Very familiar chapter in the scriptures. Very familiar chapter in the scriptures. However, we are going to be reading Isaiah chapter 14 verses 1 on to verse 15. Okay? Please go there in your authorized version of the scriptures. Isaiah 14, verses 1 on to verse 15. Please follow me along in the authorized version of the scriptures. And I will speak to you and address you as though you are following me along. Okay? For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob, and will yet choose Israel, and set them in their own land, and the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Yes, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, is not done with the Jew, with the Hebrew, not at all. The Jew is still the apple of his eye. And it says here, For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob, and will yet choose Israel, and set them in their own land. And amen, that has happened. In 1948, uh, God reestablished Israel in their own land. Israel became a nation again, okay? After the Jew went through the uh, chastisement, if you will, of the Holocaust. And I do believe uh, wholeheartedly that the Holocaust was God's judgment on his people. I absolutely believe that. And the stranger shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. This does not mean that we as the Gentile become Jewish, you know, uh, start to wear the kippers and, and uh, whatnot. But no, um, one possible thing that you can tie into this is that we, the Gentile in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, have been grafted into the tree of the Jew. And also there is uh, parts within the scriptures where uh, men will take hold of the skirt of one who is a Jew, okay? Uh, because the Jew is ultimately the apple of God's eye. God is not done with the Jew. In this dispensation, it says right here, and will yet choose Israel. Like I said, uh, Israel is the apple of God's eye. There is no getting away from that. But he has grafted us into the tree of the Jew to make them jealousy. Hence the time of the Gentiles being grafted into the tree of the Jew because salvation is of the what? The who? The Jews. See? And the people shall take them and bring them to their place and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids and they shall take them captives who captives they were 
and they shall ride over their oppressors, over their oppressors. This also, uh, you can reference this onto the time of Jacob's trouble afterwards, after the time of Jacob's trouble, at his second coming, when the king of the Jews is going to come back with we, his church, and establish the kingdom of heaven. Okay? And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow. Rest from thy sorrow. Clearly uh, making reference on to the time of Jacob's trouble and the coming kingdom of heaven. Because sorrow, time of Jacob's trouble. It's going to be a very sorrowful time. And from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou wast made to serve. And also for our instruction in righteousness, put this into the equation. How many of us are, are, are being made to serve with this wickedness, meaning um, enduring it, you know? Think about that. Think about that. How many people are in fear right now? Hmm? How many people are um, not serving by a choice, but, you know, because of all these mandates that are being put into effect. Hmm? Times are getting nasty, brother. Times are getting quite nasty. Verse 4. That thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon, and say, How hath the oppressor ceased, the golden city ceased, and our enemy is who? Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Roman Catholicism and her army, the Jesuit order. The Lord hath broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers, which he will do when he comes back at his second coming. He who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke, he that ruled the nations in anger, is persecuted, and none hinder it. Who is going to stop the Lord? Who is going to hinder him when he come back and uh, take and bind Satan uh, for a thousand years? And then he is going, our Lord is going to establish the kingdom of heaven. Peace for a thousand years. A, uh, a kingdom of farming and whatnot. We'll look at that here in a little bit. Okay, But who is going to hinder the Lord? A 200 million man army is going to be nothing unto our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. He's just going to speak and utterly de devastate and destroy that army. Verse 7. The whole earth is at rest and is quiet. They break forth into singing. Obviously. Is the whole earth, is the whole earth right now at rest? Is everybody breaking forth and singing? Right now they're saying peace and safety. We need peace and safety. That's what they are saying. When they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them. No, dear friends. Verse 7 is clearly making reference unto the kingdom of heaven. Yea, the fir trees rejoice at thee, and the cedars of Lebanon, saying, Since thou art laid down, no feller has come up against us. Hell from beneath is moved for, for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It hath raised up, it hath raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. Hold your place here and go to Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20. Please bear with your servant, brethren. I'm, I'm not uh, hardly 100%. Uh, hardly. Uh, like I said, I did not sleep that well last night. had a horrible night, actually. But um, verse 9 again in Isaiah 14. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It hath raised up it hath raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. Revelation 20, verses 11 on to verse 15. 
And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books. according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And people will look at verse 14 and say, well, that means that they're the soul annihilationism thing. No, it's an eternal torment. Eternal. Burning forever and ever. Dear friends, eternal damnation is a doctrine of the scriptures. And, the, and what awaits you for rejecting our Lord Jesus Christ, God? Go back to Isaiah chapter 14, picking up at verse 10. All they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? Thy pomp is brought down to the grave, and the noise of thy vials. The worm is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee. And the worms cover thee. Hold the place here again. Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. Yes, dear friend. Without the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, uh, if you do not come to him on his terms, uh, broken and contrite, and in the fear of the Lord you cry out to him, uh, call upon his name and ask him for his forgiveness. If he does not save you, there is no option B, or there is no option C. There is no purgatory. You're either going to go to heaven or you're going to go to hell. Okay? That's all there is. Either or. Mark chapter 9. Verses 43 on to verse 48. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. Never shall be quenched. This is not a contradiction to Revelation chapter 20, dear friend. Okay? Death and hell will be cast into the lake of fire. In that lake of fire, you're going to burn for eternity, dear friend. Yeah, it's not you go up like a puff and that's it. No, no. Whereas we who are saved of our Lord Jesus Christ, the church of the living God, and those who will be saved during the time of Jacob's trouble, we are going to be with the Lord for eternity. Okay? But those who are without are going to burn forever and ever. Eternal damnation. And it says here, if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. Okay? He's, again, he's not talking about literal mutilation. Okay? If you're like, for example, you're online looking at things that you shouldn't with your hands, using your hands, uh, putting your hands where they should not be, repent of it. Cut it off. You know, stop it. Sanctify. Mortification, that kind of thing, okay? Verse 44, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. <clears throat> Verse 11 in Isaiah chapter 14. Thy pomp is brought down to the grave, and the noise of thy vowels, vials, excuse me. The worm is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee. Verse 45 in Mark chapter 9. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter halt, to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched, 
where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Again, if you're going places where you shouldn't, if your foot is leading you into places where um, you know that's going to cause you to sin and whatnot, cut them off. Repent. Stop. Okay? Take dra drastic action. Turn from those things. Okay? Verse 47. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. Are you looking at things you shouldn't be looking at? Are you setting, setting wicked things before thine eyes? I hate the work of those that turn aside. It shall not cleave unto me. You know, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of those who turn aside. It shall not cleave unto me. You've got to be careful of what you're putting before your eyes, dear friend. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire, where the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. There's your reward for those of you who are against our Lord Jesus Christ. You devil Jesuit coadjutors preaching your easy believism that skip over scriptural repentance and brokenness, uh, brokenness and contrition, excuse me. Fear of the Lord, calling upon his name, the changed life that comes after salvation. And those of you that flat out reject God and choose the instruments of a foolish shepherd. Who is this foolish shepherd? Back to Isaiah chapter 14. Notice in verse 11, thy pomp is brought down to the grave. Pomp, boasting yourselves, proud of your sins, not hiding your sins, flaunting your sins, sins without any shame. Verse 12, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cast down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit course that's talking about Lucifer, Satan, the devil, that old serpent, who is going to be physically manifest in that man of sin, the son of perdition. After we, the church of the living God, be resurrected, uh, redeemed, our Lord is going to open the seal, and out comes that man of sin, the son of perdition. See, that spirit of Antichrist, that spirit of Antichrist. Antichrist is not only against anti, but it is also a replacement. Look at that verse, verse 14. I will be like the Most High. Satan counterfeits everything the Lord does. The Lord, our God, our Father, Jesus Christ, has a church, his body, the church of the living God. Satan has his church, Roman Catholicism. Okay? Satan is a copycat. He is a counterfeit. We, God's word, is the authorized version of the scriptures. Okay? known as the King James Version. Satan counterfeits that with all the Bibles. I point over there because on the bottom of that bookshelf is where all the um, Bibles are that I have. Okay? Satan is a copycat, as a counterfeit. He purposely counterfeits everything that the Lord does. Okay? Everything. So to be anti is against, but also to replace, to counterfeit, because, verse 14, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, 
I will be like the Most High. Satan wants to be God. You read Ezekiel chapter 28. Satan's sin was pride. He was taken with his own beauty by his uh, brightness, his light, you know. He is transformed into an angel of light, remember? Satan is a copycat. Satan is a counterfeit. Go to Revelation chapter 6. Revelation chapter 6. Okay? Today, Satan is um, counterfeiting so many things. For example, the scriptures. He's counterfeited them with the Bibles. Okay? Like the NIV, the ESV, the New American Standard, the Not King James. Um, so many, so many, there's so many to count. Okay? Again, Satan is a counterfeit, a copycat. He's got his own church, Roman Catholicism. Okay? He has his own army, the Jesuit order, as we are called as soldiers unto our Lord Jesus Christ. Satan has called his soldiers the Jesuit order. Okay? Okay? But, Revelation chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. And I saw when the Lamb, who is the Lamb, our Lord Jesus Christ, opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. Okay? This is that man of sin, the son of perdition. Okay? That is the son of perdition, who Satan is going to indwell himself. Okay? Satan is going to indwell this man. And this, uh, the son of perdition is set forth by who? When the Lamb, our Lord Jesus Christ, opens one of the seals. And we, the church of the living God, are redeemed, caught up in Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. Okay? The Lord has set this. The Lord is in control. The Lord has allowed Satan to do what he is doing. The Lord is allowing all these things to happen for judgment against this evil wicked world that rejects him. It is only his long suffering and his mercy that we have today. Now, go to Revelation chapter 19. Revelation chapter 19. Revelation chapter 19. Remember, okay, in Revelation chapter 6, okay, Revelation chapter 6, verse 2. And I saw and behold a white horse, copycat, counterfeit, and he that sat on him had a bow, a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. After we, the church of the living God, are redeemed, and that man of sin, the son of perdition, is uh, revealed, and set for and set forth going conquering going to conquer and to conquer conquering and to conquer beg your pardon he's going to leave a wake of devastation in his path he's going to destroy many things i personally believe that the totality of the economic system will uh, at its totally across the entire world will totally be destroyed during that uh, man of sin, that son of perdition, going forth conquering and to conquer. Uh, the, uh, for example, the American dollar, the American economy is going to crash any day. It can happen at any day. Okay, But the totality of that devastation, I believe, is going to be wrought with the um, uh, that man of sin, the son of perdition, going forth conquering and to conquer. Okay, But Revelation chapter 19 and after these things I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Alleluia, Alleluia. There is no hallelujah in the scriptures, dear friend. Salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments. For he hath judged the great whore which did corrupt the earth with her fornication and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. 
And the great whore is who? Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Roman Catholicism. Uh, you read uh, Revelation 17 and 18. Revelation chapter 17 clearly identifies Roman Catholicism. And Revelation 18 is the destruction of Catholicism. Verse 3. And again they said, Alleluia. And her smoke rose up forever and ever. Her smoke rose up forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped God that sat on the throne, saying, Alleluia, or Amen, Alleluia. And a voice came out of the throne, saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice, and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. His wife. Who is that? We. His body. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he saith unto me, Write. Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet, and I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Now, this person who John fell down to worship uh, is one of us, one of us that get redeemed, one of the church of the living God, okay? That's why he says that. He's like, uh, see thou do it not. What does he say? I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Remember, we, when we get redeemed, we are going to be likened unto angels, Okay, let's continue. And I saw heaven, heaven open, and behold, pay attention, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many, not a singular, many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the capital W word of God, referring unto our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Hi, that's us. Now remember how that man of sin, the son of perdition, had a bow? Okay. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture, vesture is an article of clothing, and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Uh, Jesus did not have a tattoo. You will see people that will twist this and say, on his vesture and on his thigh, a name written, meaning that uh, Jesus had a tattoo on his thigh. No, no, it was on his ve on a vesture, on his vesture, which is an article of clothing. Be aware of that. And I saw an angel standing in the sun. And he cried with a loud voice, saying, To all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains. Thy pomp shall be brought down to the ground. Remember what we read in Isaiah? And the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and of them that sit on them and the flesh of all men, both free and bound, both small and great. 
going to look at a comparison there here in just a minute. Okay, remember that, verse 18. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army and against his army. And the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before, them, before him with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worship his image. Verse 18, where it says, uh, both free and bond, both small and great. And here verse 20 is talking about those who received the mark of the beast. Okay? You take the mark of the beast during the time of Jacob's trouble, you're done. You're done. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. You are done. Okay? These both were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded, proceeded out of his mouth. And all the fowls were filled with their flesh. His second coming, okay? And while we are here, let's read Revelation chapter 20 now. Again, we're in 20, verses 1 on to verse 6. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones, and they sat and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part on the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Now we, we get redeemed for catching away. Okay, We get caught up. We come back down with the Lord Jesus Christ. But those who actually survive the time of Jacob's trouble, okay, okay, for a thousand years, the kingdom of heaven, going to rule and reign with him, okay. But now go back to Revelation chapter 13, okay. Revelation chapter 13. Here is what everyone today is being prepared for. Everyone is being prepared for this right here. Revelation chapter 13, verses 11 on to verse 18. Now, this is a Satan's counterfeit, okay? Okay? This is how Satan is counterfeiting the, um, how it's going to be in the kingdom of heaven, okay? Remember, Satan's kingdom is only not even going to last seven years. It's not going to last even that. But when our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, come down with us, okay, okay, he's going to establish the kingdom of heaven, a thousand year reign of peace, something that Satan can never offer you. Because today they are saying peace and safety, okay, and today what's being implemented, slowly but surely they are pressing. If you want to work, continue to work. You need to receive the steel of the Jesuit Panyer. Here in America, a lot of corporations are doing that, mandating that people receive the steel of the Jesuit Panyer in order to make a living. Okay? Yes. Now you have to remember, the steel of the Jesuit Panyer is not the mark of the beast. If someone receives the steel of the Jesuit Panyer, they can get saved. But see, during the time of Jacob's trouble, when uh, the church of the living God get redeemed and then begins the time of Jacob's trouble, salvation changes in that dispensation. 
It's faith and works, keeping the commandments of God. You cannot take that mark of the beast, okay? It's faith and works. You take the mark of the beast, you're damned. No ifs, ands, or buts. But see, all this that is going on right now is preparing you, the lost. And you disgusting, professing Christians that are not of the church of the living God, that bow down to all of this stuff, your damnation is just. May any of you who call yourself a Christian and are not of the church of the living God and have willfully given yourself over to the steel of the Jesuit poniard and are telling people, God loves you. God wants you to do this because you've got to think of other people. God would have you to receive the steel of the Jesuit poniard. Yeah. Revelation 13, verses 11 on to verse 18. Close of the chapter. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. How do dragons speak? Okay, how do dragons speak? Um, speak like a dragon. Remember, we just saw the dragon, the serpent, the devil, Satan, okay? Dragons, how do they speak? They speak smoothly. They itch your ears. They tell you what you want to hear. They don't tell you, uh, they don't do anything to convict you of sin. They don't rebuke you. They want to make you comfortable in your sin. So these easy believers and devils speak like dragons. They speak smooth things. They're so sweet. They're so harmless, right? Yeah. Yeah. Let's continue. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. This is the false prophet, okay? The beast, the false prophet, and the devil. There's your trinity, okay? And he, do, and he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on earth in the sight of men. Like Elijah did, who was who called down fire to consume the captains of fifty with their fifties. Okay. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, and that that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And right here, right here, this, this right here in Revelation 16, this is what all of you are being prepared for. All of you who think you are saved of the church of the living God because you merely believe, skipping over Brokenness, contrition, the fear of the Lord, disputing, calling upon the name of the Lord, disputing the change to life that happens after the Lord saves you. This is what you people are being prepared for. Okay? This is it. This is what you are being prepared for. Because after we, the church of the living God, are redeemed, these people are going to be telling you during the time of Jacob's trouble, just believe. Just believe. Take the mark. You have to provide for your own. You're eternally secure. You're sealed because you just believe. And they call themselves dispensationalists, by the way. This is what you're being set up for, people. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And cross-reference this with Revelation chapter 19, verse 18, that they may eat the flesh of kings, okay? Flesh of kings, 
both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, okay? Kings, rulers, and the flesh of captains, we're in Revelation 19, verse 18, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. Skipping down to verse 20 in Revelation 19. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into, into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. If I said thee in, uh, previously, please forgive me. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the, the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. Go back to Revelation chapter 13, verse 17. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the number, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. Now we can that interpretation of six six six. There are several interpretations out there. Um, what I hold to is that six 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 is www the World Wide Web. Okay. But also it could be correlated onto the number of the popes and that kind of thing, okay? But regardless, 666 uh, here is equated onto the number of the beast. That man of sin, the son of perdition. But you see, he causeth all men, he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Take out the letter R and put an S there for mark. What do you have? Now again, this, I believe, happens somewhere midway during the time of Jacob's trouble. Because you're going to remember... When the son of perdition goes forth conquering and to conquer, he is going to leave a wake of devastation in his path. Just a, a, an utter wake of destruction. Okay? And he's going to have people receive the mark in, in their right hand or in their forehead. You won't be able to buy or sell. During the time of Jacob's trouble, like I said, is when I believe that the entire world uh, economy is going to be devastated. Uh, like I said, America's economy is going to collapse. There is going to be collapses of economies, yes. But the entire econ uh, economy on the world, I believe, is going to be devastated. One, after we get redeemed, and when that man of sin, that's the son of perdition going forth conquering and con to conquer, to destroy all the economies, so he can set this up. This is what you people are being prepared for. Now see here in America, in some places, restrictions have been lifted. <laughs> okay. But look at what they're doing, the Jesuits. Look at what they're doing. Slowly but surely, from the mighty unto the mundane, required meetings with the steel of the Jesuit poniard in order to work from corporations such as Disney to those possibly at McDonald's. I know that Walmarts are also going along with it. You need to wake up, people. You need to wake up. Now, go to Revelation 14, verses 6 on to verse 13. Now, Remember, these people called easy believism heretics just believe. They call themselves dispensational, but they're not. Okay? What changes in, this, in the dispensation is salvation. 
Salvation is different in, sal in the dispensations. Okay? You're not saved, made right with the Lord the same way today as you were in the Garden of Eden. Okay? That, that is so, I mean, that is mindless. The Lord himself, you know, the voice of the Lord walking in the cool of the garden in the day, okay? They saw the Lord. How does a voice walk unless he have a body, okay? The Garden of Eden was works, okay? Was works. Don't eat of the tree. Don't do that. They did it. Look what happened. Thanks, Adam and Eve, you know? The, the, the Garden of Eden alone disproves that it's faith alone from beginning on to end. It's nonsense. These people are lying to you. And you like to hear that because these people who tell you that preach against brokenness of self-righteousness. Sorrow. That it's your fault that he died on the cross. Fear of the Lord. They preach against that because calling on the name of the Lord out of fear of the Lord. And your life is going to change because the Lord will be in you if he save you. And this is what these guys preach against. And this is their end result. The end justifies the means to these guys. The motto of the Jesuit order. Revelation 14 verses 6 on to verse 13. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation, and kindred, and tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God, and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him that made heaven and earth, and the sea, and the fountains of waters. And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, Rome, not Jerusalem, it's Rome. Rome. Because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. You know, the mass with the Eucharist and the cup of wine that they do the transubstantiation, the abracadabra, hocus pocus. Okay? And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, Pay attention. If any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, you are worshiping the beast the minute you take that. Okay? It's not like what Kent Helvin says, who himself is a Jesuit. Um, it's not like you, you have to do these three things in order to receive this damnation. No. You take that mark, dear friends. You're done. Okay? You're done. Verse 9 again. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. Now see, the wine of the wrath of God, the wine of her fornication, See that? The wine of the wrath of God versus the wine of her, uh, the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Get these people drunken. Did you read the seventh proverb today, by the way? Let's continue. Which is poured out with, with which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall tor and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Tormented. We are going to see this. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. It's not soul annihilation, uh, annihilationism like what Bullinger taught. Like what the Jehos teach. Like that Super Mario Vigilant Christian Devil teaches. Okay? No. The smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. 
ever and ever, where the worm dieth not and the fire is never quenched. That is your ultimate end, people. Hell, the lake of fire burning forever and ever, covered with worms. You need to really consider just how much of that is worth you losing your own soul. Now today, like I said, you can receive the steel of the Jesuit Panyard. It's not the mark of the beast. But that is what it is training you people for to come. And it's just around the corner when we are going to be redeemed. And he shall be, okay, let's read that again. Verse 10. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name, read that again, and whosoever, whosoever, it's not these like the one, two, three things, no, you receive the mark of the beast, whosoever, you could be saying, I believe on Jesus and keeping the commandments and doing all these things, you take the mark of the beast, you're done. You're going to hell. You're going to burn forever and ever. There is no repentance for that. There is no forgiveness of that. Yes, that sin, taking the mark of the beast, damns you to hell forever. And it's not like these uh, Ruckmanites, these devil Ruckmanites teach. Pluck it out. You know, cut it off, pluck it out. Or like that wicked Calvinist uh, MacArthur teach about, yeah, I believe you can take the mark of the beast and still go to heaven. No. This is what you're being prepared for. So when it comes to pass after that wake and devastation that the son of perdition is going to cause when he goes forth conquering and to conquer. This is what you are being prepared for. I pray you wake up. I really do. I really do. I really do. Now, go to Psalm 98. Psalm 98. Um, I shared this with some brethren the other day. Psalm 98. I, I can't get away from this psalm. I just can't get away from this psalm. This psalm is uh, both referring on to the second coming of our Lord and the establishment of the kingdom of heaven and his judgment. Psalm 98. You need a little comfort today, brother, sister? There are so many of you out there of the Church of the Living God who are suffering. I mean, we're, we're just, the uh, Church of the Living God is in rough shape right now. So many of us are suffering. So many of us are going through trials and tribulations. On that, hold your place at Psalm 98, beg your pardon. 1 Peter, chapter 4. 1 Peter, chapter 4. Come on, fingers, work with me. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 17. For us today, of the church of the living God, for the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? We are to live out our lives here as a church of the living God in fear and trembling. The fear of the Lord. We will have joy. That will bring us unto joy. 
unspeakable joy. Because our rewards are great in heaven. Yes, because we love him who first loved us. But judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, judgment. I was given a thorn in the flesh, so I don't get distracted. So are many of you being given thorns in the flesh. Judgment has be is beginning at the house of God. To judge ourselves, to examine ourselves. You got to stop messing around. I'm here to tell you. Okay? And also, too, we are in the falling away. And the falling away, um, I am fully persuaded. The falling away that Paul spake of in 2 Thessalonians, okay? Yes, those are the church of the living God can get messed up in all kinds of things. Again, that's what First and Second Corinthians addresses, okay? Those two books in their entirety. But your, your testimony, your life is going to be shot. And if you mess around long enough, the Lord will hand you over for the destruction of the flesh so that the spirit uh, may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. But what I am convinced of the falling away is, is of course, 1 John chapter 2, verse 19. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest, that they might be, that they might be made manifest, that they were not all of us. That, I wholeheartedly believe, is the falling away that Paul speaks of. I am convinced of it. I am convinced of it. Psalm 98. O sing unto the Lord a new song, for he hath done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm hath gotten him the victory. His right hand. Um sitting on the right hand of God, his holy arm, our Lord Jesus Christ, you know, God manifest in the flesh, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, okay? And he's gotten the victory. Oh, death, where is thy sting? See, you and I as the church of the living God, we need not fear death because we know where we're going. The Lord hath made known his salvation. His righteousness hath he openly shewed in the sight of the heathen. Yes, God has openly shewed his salvation unto everyone. The way of the cross. Okay? The way of the cross. The way of salvation has been made plain for everyone to see. But see, yea, hath God said, Satan. And his counterfeit, his counterfeit religion, Roman Catholicism, his counterfeit Bibles, the NIV and all that stuff. All of this counterfeit that Satan does. But the Lord has made it plain to everyone. That does not mean that everyone is going to come unto the Lord uh, to be saved. Okay? That's not what that means. Okay? Thank your pardon. I'm writing stuff down uh, for links after the after this video is done. I forget those easily. Okay, he's not talking about Calvinism either. This is not a reference onto Calvinism. Nothing like that. The way of salvation has been made plain. Come to the Lord Jesus Christ on His terms. Broken of your self righteousness, and in that brokenness you will have contrition, godly sorrow, for what you did to Him, and oh, and be. Sorrowful at, over, at how wretched you are. And in all of that, you will have fear of the Lord. Because of what you did to him. And how he died for you. Okay? You're going to have fear. Why? Because he can put you in hell. So brokenness of self-righteousness. Godly sorrow. Contrition. Sorrow for what you did to him. And sorrow, of course, that you're so evil. Hi. And godly uh, and fear the Lord. If you don't get right with Him on His terms, you're going to hell. 
And in that fear, you will call upon the name of the Lord. And may He save you. It's been made plain. But see, so many of you can't get over yourself. Therein is the crux. Therein is the monkey in the wrench. Pride. Verse 3. He hath remembered his mercy and his truth toward the house of Israel. Remember, he's not done with Israel. He came here offering the kingdom of heaven unto the Jew first. Okay? Then he died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. To make the perfect atonement for sin by shedding his blood on the cross. The gospel was given unto the Jew first, primarily. But after they rejected, which, and after he ascended, you know, died, buried, and rose again, and went up to heaven, you know, after he died, buried, and rose again, and paid for our sins, that was the beginning of this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles. But see, he had to first offer the gospel unto the Jew. They rejected that in Acts chapter 7. And then immediately after Acts chapter 7, you see the first Gentiles saved, as we are saved today. Gentiles being grafted in, the time of the Gentiles Let's continue. He hath remembered his mercy and his truth toward the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. No one is, um, no one is ignorant. No one is going to be able to claim, claim, um, claim ignorance about what it is to be saved. Not going to be able to do it. The way of the cross, brokenness, contrition, fear of the Lord, calling upon the name of the Lord change life after he saves you. It's simple. It really is. It's there. You just got to get over yourself there, buddy boy. And those of us who are of the church of the living God, make a joyful noise unto the Lord all the earth. Make a loud noise and rejoice and, and, rejoice and sing praise. Sing unto the Lord with the harp. With the harp and the voice of a psalm. My wife and I, before I came in and started doing this, well, we're singing hymns. With trumpets and sound of cornet, cornet, make a joyful noise before the Lord, the King. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Let the sea roar and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein, Remember, there are occurrences in Scripture where the waters are likened unto people. Revelation chapter 17. The horse sitteth on many waters, and the waters are likened unto people, are peoples. Let the sea roar and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. And that's a semicolon, continuing the train of thought in the sentence. Mm. Let the floods clap their hands. Let the hills be joyful together. How do floods clap their hands? Floods of people. Clap their hands. Clap their hands. Okay? Before the Lord. For he cometh to judge the earth. And with righteousness shall he judge the world and the people with equity. Amen. And we already looked at that in Revelation, didn't we? But now, when he comes back, see this, computers, the digital age. See, the mark of the beast in your right hand or in your forehead is computer. Absolutely. Technology. You know? Look at all the stuff that they're using nowadays. Those are stepping stones to bring in the Mark of the Beast system. And I truly believe that the Mark of the Beast system could be implemented instantly. The technology is there. Just things have to happen first before that happens, you know. But during the Kingdom of Heaven, that thousand year reign of our Lord Jesus Christ, go to Ezekiel chapter 47. What's that going to be like? What is that going to be like? Ezekiel 47, verses 6 on to verse 12. Ezekiel 47, verses 6 on to verse 12. 
And he said unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen this? Then he brought me, and caused me to return to the brink of the river. Now when I had returned, behold, at the bank of the river were very many trees on the one side and on the other. Then said he unto me, These waters issue out toward the east country, and go down into the desert, and go into the sea, which being brought forth into the sea, which being brought forth into the sea, the waters shall be healed. And remember, one of the judgments in the book of Revelation is that the waters are going to be, um, are going like all the fish, and, uh, not all of them, but a bunch of the fish and things of the sea are going to die by poison, be poisoned, wormwood, that kind of stuff. And the trees are going to be burnt up in some of these judgments, okay? A lot of devastation is coming to the earth during the time of Jacob's trouble. Here in Ezekiel chapter 47, clearly is making reference on to the kingdom of heaven. Clearly. Clearly. Okay? Clearly. Let's continue. But remember that. That the waters are going to be made poisonous uh, as one of the judgments in the book of Revelation. Okay? And here it says, uh, then, he, he, then said he unto me, These waters issue out toward the east country, and go down into the desert, and go into the sea, which being brought forth into the sea, the waters shall be healed. And it shall come to pass that everything that liveth which moveth, whithersoever the river shall come, shall live. And there shall be a very great multitude of fish, because these waters shall come thither, for they shall be healed. And everything shall live whither the river cometh. The water of life, you know. Water, clear waters of life. And it shall come to pass that the fisher shall stand upon it from Engedi, even unto Engalium. They shall be a, be a place to spread forth nets. Their fish shall be according to their kinds. Distinction. Yes, remember during the, um, the, during the time of Jacob's trouble, the, tel the twelve tribes are going to be re- distinguished, okay? Because you read the book of James, unto the twelve tribes scattered abroad, greetings. Right now in this dispensation, okay, even look upon the Jews of today in Israel, okay? It's a, a collective thing, okay? After we get redeemed, that man of sin, the son of perdition, who is going to be Jewish at least have the ancestry heritage of Jewishness, of Hebraic within him. Because how are the Jews going to worship at first and fall for a Gentile Messiah? They're not. They're not. He's going to be partly at least of their own. He's going to be a Jew. He's going to be a Hebrew at least partly. Okay? Remember that. Remember that. Okay? But the 12 tribes come back. So, where it says here, their fish shall be according to their kinds, as the fish of the great sea exceeding many. Remember, Satan's plan, Roman Catholicism's plan, and the army of the Jesuit, okay? And Catholicism is Satan's church. What is their plan? To bring everybody together. To bring everybody together, just like at the Tower of Babel, which Catholicism refers to as the era of Babel, when the Lord dispersed everybody. Okay? Okay? So, Satan brings everybody together, and as part of the healing, God's going to separate. But the miry places thereof and the marshes thereof shall not be healed. They shall be given to salt. And by the river upon the bank thereof, on this side and on that side, shall grow all trees for meat. Trees for meat. Whose leaf shall not fade, neither shall the fruit thereof be consumed. It shall bring forth new fruit according to his months. Because their waters they issued out of the sanctuary, 
and the fruit thereof shall be for meat, and the leaf thereof for medicine. So remember today with the steel of the Jesuit Punyard, the synthetic vitamins, the synthetic minerals, these Jesuit sorcery, witchcraft, poison, pharmacaea drugs that they are prescribing to people. It's going to get back to what God created during the kingdom of heaven. Natural. Things are going to be healed. We are going to cultivate. We are going to farm the earth. Go now to Amos chapter 9. Amos chapter 9. Okay? Amos chapter 9. Verses 11 on to verse 15. Amos chapter 9, verses 11 on to verse 15. Um, the clear, some of the clearest passages in Scripture that talk about the reestablishing of, of, of the kingdom of heaven and that our Lord Jesus Christ is going to rule and reign for a thousand years as king of the Jews in Jerusalem. As king, son of David, king. Not literal flesh king, uh, uh, son of David, but when they say son of David, that's referring on to his kingship, okay? In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen, and close up the breaches thereof. And I will raise up his ruins, and I will build it as in the days of old. Okay? While Satan wants to bring in the new world order, which is the dark ages, which has already been, okay? Our Lord is going to bring it back to the days of old. What does that mean? None of this stuff. No cell phones. No computers. Um, no vehicles possibly. But just horses and boats and stuff. Like it was. Pure. Healed. Living off of nature. Okay? That they may possess the remnant of Edom. And of all the heathen which are called by my name. saith the Lord that doeth this. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper, and the treader of grapes him that soweth seed, and the mountain shall drop sweet wine, and all the hills shall melt. So see, we're going to be sowing, plowing, reaping during the kingdom of heaven. And what does it say? And the mountain shall drop sweet wine, and all the hills shall melt. It's going to be so abundant. It's going to be... Uh, a blessed harvest. We're going to be farming in the kingdom of heaven. Reaping, sowing, harvesting. None of this. No genetically mo modified organisms. No witchcraft, sorcery, um, you know, pharmacy drugs. Okay? None of that. None of that. No synthetic minerals, vitamins. None of that. None of that. No frequency, radiation frequencies, like from vi uh, 5G. None of that. No. No. Do you want it like this? Or do you want to be a farmer? Do you want, do you love this so much? Or do you want what the Lord is going to give us? Verse 14. And I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel. And they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof. They shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them. And I will plant them upon their land. And they shall no more be pulled up out of their land, which I have given them, saith the Lord thy God. So what awaits us in the kingdom of heaven is farming, agricultural things. Not any of this. No, not going to a pharmacy like or, or a chemical company like Dow, who makes genetically modified seeds, playing God, making seeds for farmers. Speaking of farming, Speaking of farming, there is a lot of evidence that is out there that could be found if you want to find it, that 
here in America and in other places on earth, a great famine is coming. Rolling famines and stuff like that. Rolling food shortages. Uh, Bill Gates of hell buying up farms uh, and stuff like that and um, halting crops for uh, upcoming years and stuff like that. Um, China buying up farms and stuff like that. You know, corporations buying up farms. They're also stockpiling food right now from these farms. These government controlled companies, Jesuit controlled companies are taking a lot of our food and stockpiling it. You can look this up on your own time. Look on websites such as Odyssey and um, there's another one, uh, Brighton or something. Go ahead and look up on these uh, sites and find that information there on your own time. Okay? But see, the Jesuits right now are taking the crops for at least here in America that are, should be going for us. They're stockpiling. Doesn't that sound interesting? Go to Genesis chapter 41. Genesis chapter 41. We will be reading verses 25 on to verse 36. Genesis chapter 41. Now, Pharaoh has a dream. Okay? He dreams of uh, ears of corn and kine. There are seven dry, uh, seven full plenteous years, and then seven blasted ears of corn. And then there are seven fat kine, and then seven lean kine. And then the um, seven lean kine eat up the fat kine so that they won't, that there will be no remembrance of the fat kine. Okay, you can read that on your own time. Okay, our Lord was showing um, Pharaoh a prophecy of what was coming. And what was coming? A famine. Genesis chapter 41, verses 25 on to verse 36. And Joseph said unto Pharaoh, The dream of Pharaoh is one. God hath shewed Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good kine are seven years, and the seven good ears are seven years. The dream is one. Seven good, uh, seven good ears. Okay, ears of corn. Okay. And the seven thin, thin and ill-favored kine that came up after the seven years and the seven empty ears blasted with the east wind shall be seven years of famine. This is the thing which I have spoken unto Pharaoh. What God is about to do, he sheweth unto Pharaoh. Behold, there come seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt. All right now, dear brethren, Friends, now's the time to stockpile on rations. My wife and I, for example, um, have been stockpiling rice, dried beans, canned goods, okay? Water, stuff like that. Lord willing, um, if he make a way too, we're going to be looking into a charcoal little grill. We got a charcoal grill, but something that we can uh, cook on. Uh, you can boil water on a charcoal grill, by the way. It just takes quite a bit of time for you to do so. But you can um, boil water on a charcoal grill, okay? What happens if they cut the electricity? The power grid goes out. Where we live, we're all electric, okay? So we have been, um, uh, been re uh, getting stuff dry storage so we could eat that way and stuff, okay? Let's continue. And there shall arise after them seven years of famine. And all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt. And the famine shall consume the land. See, you and I here in America especially, we take for granted that if we need something, we can just go to the store. Okay? What happens because of the dastardly deeds of the Jesuits? What happens when they start these rolling food shortages? You go to the store to get certain uh, types of food. The grocery's like, oh, sorry, 
don't have it today, come back in a week or something. Or the shelves start going empty hmm? when they bring in lockdowns again. Hmm? Now's the time to make these provisions. And the plenty... Okay, let's read verse 30 again. And there shall arise after them seven years of famine, and all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt, and the famine shall consume the land. You get, the, uh, you get a, a people starving, f uh, afraid, terrified, angry. That sounds like a recipe for revolt, for riot. A good reason for them to instill martial law and use the military upon us. And our military have all has been mandated to receive the steel of the Jesuit poniard, thus giving them a short lifespan. And the plenty shall not be known in the land by reason of that famine following, for it shall be very grievous. And for that the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice. It is because the thing is established by God, and God will shortly bring it to pass. Now therefore, pay attention. Let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise, and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh do this, and let him appoint officers over the land, and take up the fifth part of the land of Egypt in the seven plenteous years. And let them gather all the food of those good years that come, and lay up corn under the hand of Pharaoh, and let them keep food in the cities. And that food shall be for store to the land against the seven years of famine, which shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land perish not through the famine. So, stockpiling food to make way and provision for the years of famine. Okay? Okay? And you can look this up on your own time. Right now, my government is right now stockpiling food. Stockpiling it, putting away from the harvests. And they're not, uh, when you, you can look this up, and they are preventing future crops from coming. Okay? You look at what's going on in Canada right now with the unusual heat waves and whatnot. You look up on that. Famines are coming, brethren. But see, our government is stockpiling, okay? And wouldn't it be interesting when the Jesuits uh, say, nope, that's it, there's a shortage on everything, and the famine is officially kicked into high gear? Yeah. And our government will have all the food. They'll give it to you, but on a condition. See, Now look at verse 34. Let Pharaoh do this, and let him appoint officers over the land, and take up the fifth part of the land of Egypt in the seven plenteous years. Go to Proverbs chapter 6. Yesterday's proverb. Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6, verses 6 on to verse 11. This is some instruction and in righteousness that you and I need to heed right now, dear friend. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise, which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provideth her meat in the summer and gathereth her food in the harvest. How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? When wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? Think everything's going to get back to normal? Do we really think that our grocery stores here in America, I'm an American, are always going to be stocked full with food? Especially in this time? Okay? Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty Come as one that travaileth, that traveleth, and thy want as an armed man. If you don't make these provisions or take these precautions now, when they slam upon you, famine. 
What are you going to do? And see, sleep. Get a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. There was a Hollywood movie called They Live. They had the uh, pro wrestler guy, Roddy Roddy Piper, in it. Okay? Kind of addressing certain like things like this. Um, they Live, the Jesuits, and those who are in league with the Jesuit order. But the rest of you who are being dra uh, drawn along like sheep to the slaughter, like goats to the slaughter, okay? You're asleep. Being fed the lies of the propaganda and the mind control and believing the Catholic disease creators, which is controlled by the Jesuit order? Oh, or, or uh, what is that? The American fascist dictators the Food and Drug, or what is it, Food uh, FDA, Fascist uh, Drug Administrators, okay? <laughs> the FDA, Food and Drug Administration, okay? You believe in them? Go to the ant, thou sluggard, consider her ways and be wise, okay? Now, go to Genesis chapter 47. Genesis chapter 47. We will be reading verses 13 on to verse 26. Okay? Verses 13 on to verse 26. And there was no... Now this is... Um, Pharaoh said unto Joseph, You're the guy. You do what everyone tells you. Uh, do you do... Uh, they will do what you tell them. There's no one greater in the throne than me. Everyone went to Joseph during this famine. Everyone went to him. They did not go to Pharaoh. When people went to Pharaoh, he said, go to Joseph. Go to Joseph. Okay? Famine was sore in Egypt, the world. Okay? They, and all these people went to Pharaoh. And you got to remember, the Pharaoh that is being mentioned during the time of Egypt was a just ruler okay he was not the it was not the pharaoh that was likened in uh that was talked about in the book of es exodus okay this was a with all good um things this was a good pharaoh that heeded the advice of joseph that cared for his people okay and that cared for others okay you got to remember that you got to remember that but, verse 13, on to verse 26. And there was no bread in all the land, for the famine was very sore, so that the land of Egypt and all the land of Canaan fainted by reason of the famine. And Joseph gathered up all the money that was found in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan, for the corn which they bought. And Joseph brought the money into Pharaoh's house. And when money failed in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came unto Joseph and said, Give us bread, for why should we die in thy presence? For the money faileth. Hold your place here. Go to Proverbs chapter 11. Proverbs chapter 11. Proverbs chapter 11. Oh, come on. Beg your pardon, brethren. Proverbs chapter 11, verses 23 on to verse 31. Proverbs chapter 11. The desire of the righteous is only good, but the expectation of the wicked is wrath. There is that, there is that scattereth, and yet increaseth and there is that withholdeth more than than is meat but attendeth to poverty the liberal soul shall be made fat and he that watereth shall be watered also himself he that withholdeth corn the people shall curse him but blessing shall be upon the head of him that selleth it he that diligently seeketh good procureth favor but he that seeketh mischief, it shall come unto him. 
He that trusteth in his riches shall fall, but the righteous shall flourish as the branch. He that troubleth his own house shall inherit the wind, and the fool shall be servant to the wise in heart. The borrower, borrower shall be servant to the lender, and it says the fool shall be what? The fool shall be servant to the wise in heart. Those who are wise do what? Fear the Lord. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. Behold, the righteous shall be recompensed with an S verb in the earth, much more the wicked and the sinner. Go back to Genesis chapter 47. Picking up at verse 16. And Joseph said, Give your cattle, and I will give you, and I will give you for your cattle if money fail. And they brought their cattle unto Joseph. And Joseph gave them bread in exchange for horses, and for the flocks, and for the cattle of the herds, and for asses. And he fed them with bread for all their cattle. And he, and he fed them with bread for all their cattle for that year. When that year was ended, they came unto him the second year, and said unto him, We will not hide it from my Lord, how that our money is spent. My Lord also hath our herds, our Lord also hath our herds of cattle. There is not aught left in the sight of my Lord, but our bodies and our lands. Wherefore shall we die before thine eyes, both we and our land? Buy us and our land for bread. And we and our land will be servants unto Pharaoh, and give us seed, and we may live that we may live and not die, that the land be not desolate. And Joseph bought all the land for Egypt. And Joseph bought all the land of Egypt for Pharaoh. For the Egyptians sold every man his field, because the famine prevailed over them. So the land became Pharaoh's. And you got to remember, this Pharaoh in Genesis, who allowed Jacob to go and mourn for his father Israel was a decent, good ruler. Unlike the pharaohs that are mentioned of in uh, Exodus, which are likened onto a type of Satan. Because this ruler, this pharaoh, was just. He really was. He really was. And remember, Israel dwelt in the land of Egypt for 400 years. And then they were brought out. They were brought out of Egypt. Okay? But let's continue. Let's continue. And as for the people, he removed them to cities from one end of the borders of Egypt, even to the other end thereof. Only the land of the priests bought he not. For the priests had a portion assigned them of Pharaoh, and did eat their portion which Pharaoh gave them. Wherefore they sold not their lands. So, when food failed, they went to Joseph, not Pharaoh. They went to Joseph, and they gave everything they had in exchange for food. And he gave them seed, okay? Now think about that. Now think about this, okay? We're going to pick, be picking up at verse 23 and reading on to verse 26 here in a minute. But think about this. Go to uh, Genesis chapter 50 now, verses 19 on to verse 21. Okay? Genesis chapter 50. Actually, let's read verses 15 on to verse 21 in Genesis chapter 50. Okay? And when Joseph's brethren saw that their father was dead, they said, Joseph will peradventure hate us, and will certainly requite us all the evil which we did unto him. And they sent a messenger unto Joseph, saying, Thy father did command before he died, saying, So shall ye say unto Joseph, Forgive, I pray thee now, the trespass of thy brethren, and their sin, for they did unto thee evil. And now we pray thee, Forgive the trespass of thy servants, 
for of thy of the servants of the God of thy father. And Joseph wept when they spake unto him. Uh, can you find here in Genesis where uh, J uh, Jacob uh, said unto his sons, uh, said where they where he said unto the sons of his sons here what they said that uh, he said unto them? No, you won't find it. They weren't. You won't find it. They were lying. You don't see Jacob commanding his sons. Verse 16. And they sent a messenger unto Joseph, saying, Thy father did command before he died, saying, So shall ye say unto Joseph, Forgive, I pray thee now, the trespass of thy brethren and their sin. For they did evil unto thee. For they did unto thee evil. And now we pray thee, Forgive the trespass of the servants of the God of thy father. And when Joseph and Joseph wept when they spake unto him. You don't see Jacob saying that unto his sons. But now, now look at this. And his brethren also went and fell down before his face. And they said, Behold, we be thy servants. Pay attention. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not. For am I in the place of God? But as for you, ye thought evil against me. Look at this. But God meant it unto good to bring to pass, as it is this day, to save much people alive. Now therefore fear ye not. I will nourish you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spake kindly unto them. See, Joseph's brethren, as you know, sold, them, uh, sold him unto the Ishmaelites. But see, the Lord had a purpose. He set it uh, to work that Joseph would be established in that land during the famine so that he would uh, be the one to gather all the corn in Egypt and sell unto the people. He bought up the land for Pharaoh. And you got to remember, this Pharaoh... In, Re in Genesis chapter 47 was a good Pharaoh. Unlike the Pharaohs that you can liken onto a type of Satan within Exodus and so forth. Okay? This Pharaoh was a good Pharaoh. This Pharaoh was a decent Pharaoh. Okay? You got to remember that. You have to remember that. And God put this all in motion so he could pres preserve people alive. Okay? This was at the hands of the Lord. Okay? And you notice how they sold everything on, uh, they traded onto Joseph. They gave him his cattle, their lands. And hence, he got the whole country, uh, he got the whole land for Pharaoh and gave them food. Okay? In a type. In a type. In a type. This is a type of Christ. What Joseph is doing here. Providing for his own, okay? In time of famine. You read in Exodus, God makes a distinction between the children of Israel and the children of Egypt, the world. Because remember, the pharaohs after Genesis were evil, who hated Israel. You've got to remember that. You've got to remember that, okay? But there was a distinction between God's chosen, the Israelites, and the Egyptians, the worldly, okay? You have to remember that. There was a distinction there, a very big distinction there, okay? And in type, Joseph being a type of Christ, providing for the people who come to him. They give everything they have. They come to him broken, empty, and give everything onto him. And in return, he gives them seed. A type of the provision that Christ gives unto us, his body, the church of the living God. Okay? But see, the counterfeit, Satan. Our government is stockpiling food right now. What's, uh, what are they going to ask in return to get provision from the government? I wonder. Let's read now verses 23 on to verse 26. Then said Joseph unto the people, Behold, 
I have bought you this day and your land for Pharaoh. Lo, here is seed for you, and ye shall sow the land, and it shall come to pass in the increase that ye shall give the fifth part unto Pharaoh, and four parts shall be your own, for the seed of the field and for your food, and for them of your households, and for food for your little ones. And they said, Thou hast saved our lives. Let us find grace in the sight of my Lord, and we will be Pharaoh's servants. And Joseph made it a law over the land of Egypt unto this day, that Pharaoh should have the fifth part, except the land of the priests only, which came not, which became not Pharaoh's. Okay? Now hold your place here and go to Zechariah chapter 14. Zechariah chapter 14. Okay? Zechariah chapter 14. Zechariah chapter 14, verses 16 on to verse 20. On to verse 21. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left... Now this is talking about the reestablishment of the... Uh, or this is talking about the kingdom of heaven. When our Lord comes down and is reigning from Jerusalem as king, is, uh, the king of the Jews. This is after the time of Jacob's trouble. When our Lord comes back with us and establishes the kingdom of heaven. Okay? And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem, making reference of those during the time of Jacob's trouble that went against Jerusalem, and our Lord came back and spoke and obliterated them all, okay? Shall even go up from year to year to worship the king the Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. This is what's coming during the kingdom of heaven. It's not going to be computer. It's not going to be electronic. Okay? You're going to have to go to Jerusalem at the Feast of Tabernacles and worship Jesus Christ, God our Father, the King of the Jews, during the time of, uh, during the kingdom of heaven. Okay? You're going to have to go and worship him because he's going to be on the throne. You're going to be able to see him. That's why in the kingdom of heaven, it's works. It's works. Okay? Because he's going to be there on the throne. You're going to be able to see him. Okay? And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. Again, showing that during the kingdom of heaven, it's going to be farming. And if you don't go and worship the Lord Jesus Christ at the Feast of Tabernacles, you're not going to get rain. He's going to give you a oh, famine. Because what happens if you don't get rain? Crops dwindle. In an in a agricultural society of farming... You don't get rain? Okay? Read Amos chapter 4, by the way, sometime. Okay? Verse 18. And if the family of Egypt go not up, and come not, that have no rain, there shall be the plague, wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. All works during the time, uh, during the kingdom of heaven. Excuse me. It's all works because the Lord is going to be on the throne. In that day shall there be upon the bells of the horses holiness unto the Lord. And the pots in the Lord's house shall be like the bowls before the altar. Yea, every pot in Jerusalem and in Judah shall be holiness unto the Lord of hosts. And all they that sacrifice, sacrifices during the uh, kingdom of heaven, shall come and take of them and see therein. And in that day there shall be no more the Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. So, during the kingdom of heaven, the thousand year reign, farming, works, 
You're going to have to go worship the King, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. And if you don't, He's going to withhold rain. He's going to send a plague. You're not going to have crops. You're not going to have food. The typology here in Genesis chapter 47. Joseph as a type of Christ. People come to, unto him broken and begging, hey, feed us, take care of us. And he does. And he, he trades them for livestock and even for themselves. Okay? And he buys the whole land for uh, Pharaoh. And remember, this Pharaoh was a good Pharaoh. Decent. Okay? He was a just Pharaoh. Unlike the Pharaohs that you come across in uh, Exodus. And those Pharaohs are the ones that are likened onto Satan. This Pharaoh was just. He was a just ruler. He was. Genesis kind of tells us that. Okay? But here's the thing. Whereas in type, Joseph is acting as Christ, providing for his people, okay, providing for those who come to them, who come to him. Were these people not broken? Were they not needy? And he gave to them a type of Christ. Here's the counterfeit. Our government and governments around the world are stockpiling food. And right now they're pushing, slowly but surely, mandated appointments with the steel of the Jesuit Panier. It's getting to the point here in America, slowly, that unless you receive the steel of the Jesuit Panier, you're not going to be able to work. Preparing you people for the mark of the beast that's coming. What happens when they produce the famine? in the land. And there are those of you out there who have not been uh, as the ant per, uh, um, working in the summer, uh, stockpiling in the summer, so that when the winter comes, you'll be able to feed yourselves. What happens to those of you who take for granted the grocery stores? There's no food. Then along comes our, uh, I'm using America as an example, then comes our American Jesuit government run by President Harris and her front man, Smoking Joe. We have all the food you want. We'll give you food. Okay? Our, your, the economy uh, collapsed because, uh, you know, you, you didn't want to go and do what's good for everybody. So, come on. We'll give you food. Go ahead and take, receive the steel of the Jesuit Panier. And we'll give you all the food you want. See, God established Joseph. God established Joseph. And the Pharaoh at this time was a good ruler unto his people and was good unto the children of Israel. Okay? He was. And you've got to remember Genesis chapter 50. Verses 19 and verse 21. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for I, for am I in the place of God, but as for you, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good, to bring to pass as it is this day, to save much people alive. Now therefore fear ye not. I will nourish you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spake kindly unto them. Go to Philippians, okay? Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Come on, fingers, work with me. Beg your pardon, brethren. Come on, come on. Philippians chapter 4. Verses 10. On to verse 20. Philippians chapter 4, verses 10. On to verse 20. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly, that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again, 
wherein ye were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. Remember, in everything give thanks. Okay? I know both how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and suffer need. This is specifically for us today in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, okay? I can do all things through Christ which, strength, which strengtheneth me. Notwithstanding, ye have well done that ye did communicate with my affliction. Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonica, ye sent once and again unto my necessity. Not because I desire a gift, no. but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. But I have all, and abound. I am full. Having received of Epipharidus the things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Now unto God and our Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. God will provide for our needs. The typology of Joseph in Egypt in chapter 47 there is in type, in type, in that type, providing. People come to him, broken of themselves, were they not? They were starving. They gave away everything they, they had in order to be fed from Joseph, not Pharaoh. Remember that Pharaoh was a wise, good ruler, okay? Okay? He was kind unto the children of Israel. God set it up to preserve many people alive. But Satan, doing virtually the same thing, copycatting, mimicking, imitating, counterfeiting, doing the same thing. And it says how here in verses 23 under verse 26, how he bought the whole land for Pharaoh. Remember this Pharaoh was a good Pharaoh, okay? Yes, here in America, our Jesuit government, we got all the food you need. You don't have a job? That's okay. We're, gonna, we're going to make it a universal income. Communism. Everybody gets the same thing. Communism. The common good, that's what Catholicism teaches, communism. And we're the Jesuits that came up with the Communist Manifesto that influenced, uh, influenced Marx and Engels, I believe his name was. I have the Communist Manifesto, okay? Communism was created of the Jesuit order. Bring everything together and distribute to everyone equally. And the ID 2030 agenda, have you ever heard of that? If I can remember, I'll link that in the uh, description box. Own nothing. Be happy. I remember my wife, your sister, she, uh, she read that ID30, uh, ID2030 thing, or it might be ID2035, something like that. And her whole, her whole countenance, her whole visage was totally downcast the rest of that day because of it. But see? You want to eat? You wanna, you want, you know, your income? Here, we got it all. Come over, come on, we'll give to you. Just make sure that you receive the steel of the Jesuit poniard. And see, they implement this today, which is not the mark of the beast. Perfect preparation for you who are gonna be left behind. To receive that mark of the beast. The very subtle, the very subtle replacement, copycatting, 
of what our Lord did to uh, Joseph. Counterfeiting. And it's going to cost you far more than most of you are willing to pay. But again, you get people hungry, you get them scared, we got it all. Oh, you, you, you don't want to you don't want to take the steel of the Jesuit poniard? That's fine. Don't eat. Can't work. And this isn't even the time of Jacob's trouble. If you're not saved, what what hope do you have? You have no hope. That's why you're willing to bow your knees unto the Jesuit order, Roman Catholicism, Satan. It's not worth it. And brethren know this, but you people, once we, the Church of the Living God, are taken out of here, you're going to see things that your mind can't even possibly imagine. And what you're being prepared for today, right now, is going to uh, evolve into the mark of the beast. And you've got these easy believers and devils who preach against brokenness and contrition, the fear of the Lord, and the changed life, and convince you that you're saved because of something you do. And you go into that time period you're eternally secure. You're saved because you just believe. You take that mark of the beast. You're done. Get with it, people. Get with it before it is too late. That's going to be it for this video. Thank you on to the brother who um, kind of nudged me in this direction to uh, do this. Uh, this video was a collaborated effort. Please. Please take heed to these things. This is not, this is not conspiracy theory. This is conspiracy fact. The most important thing is for you to turn your eyes onto Jesus and come to him broken and contrite. Fear him who has power to cast you into hell and to destroy you, to let you burn forever and ever where your worm dieth not and the fire is never quenched. You can't have your cake and eat it too, man. You can't have either or. I mean, you can't have both. It's either or. You're either saved or you're lost. There is no middle ground. Please consider these things. It's going to be it for this video. Um, I was talking with a brother last night, or excuse me, this morning, and the Lord has made clear that what's going to come next, um, what has going to come next, you know, he's made me known. Um, it was very, very interesting. So, anyway, thank you so much for watching this if you do. Please keep us in your prayers as we pray for so many of you. Please continue to pray for your servant. Uh, we, we need your prayers. And thank you so much for all of you who do pray. And thank you for all of you who do help. L praise the Lord for you. Praise the Lord for you. Thank you for watching if you do. And we will see you in the next video.